A facet of modern-day business that has been gaining more and more prominence is IP, or intellectual property. In a nutshell, IP encompasses the legal property rights over creations of the mind, from song lyrics to paintings, books to computer software, and the fields of law that protect them. The owners of the intellectual property are granted the exclusive rights to a host of intangible assets, such as copyrights, trademarks, and patents. So why is IP so important in today's marketplace? Must emphasize, can't emphasize enough, that all businesses, no matter how big, no matter how small, will own, use, or create intellectual property. And they really must take full account of that. They really must incorporate it as part of their management process. Manage it, it's a valuable asset. If you don't use it, somebody else perhaps will. If you don't protect it, they can. And if you're not paying proper account of what is a very valuable element in your business, you will fail to maximize your company's chances of survival and growth. And ever more so in the competitive environment we're in, and ever more so in an economy which is increasingly and increasingly moving towards one that's based on knowledge. And we must really get this home to everyone. It's the ethos behind our activities in schools, and it's the message we need to get out to the wider business community. We, we have very, very innovative uh, areas in R&D, in higher education, but it's the rest of UK business that really must adopt this this ethos of innovation, appreciate the knowledge that they are creating and really get to grips with how best to utilize that knowledge and intellectual property underpins that process. I believe confidence is important but what gives you confidence is actually coming up as I was with innovative ideas, with new ideas which are, are not silly ideas, but ideas that really do work. There's no doubt about it, if a company is proactive in these days, not just defensive, not just defending itself, trying to uh, save whatever business they can, but going out proactively, promoting new ideas, then I think they've got every reason to be um, uh, confident. If innovation is the key to staying ahead of the game, then repeat business is the key to ensuring there is always a solid base on which to found future aspirations. But exactly how much effort should be made with respect to keeping your clients happy? And is there a surefire method to secure their long-term custom? Profitability is not the immediate need. Cash flow is the immediate need. If you get your cash flow right, ultimately you'll get your profit right. But the main thing is you, you can actually be profitable and your cash flow can be in serious trouble. And that's what brings you down. Just to, talking specifically on suppliers, I think, I think there is always a balance here. Just like your customers and your suppliers, don't forget you are a customer of your supplier. So what do you want from your supplier? Have we got lazy over the last 5, 10, 15 years in terms of the way we were dealing with those relationships with our suppliers? Are we getting the right price? Are we getting the best service? And I think we can always challenge that a bit, um, but we want good continuity. Have we had good continuity previously? And that's maybe why you're paying a premium price at the moment. Now, do you want to make sure you're still getting that continuity? Are you prepared to pay a little bit more to ensure that continuity? So maybe stay with it, but there's nothing wrong in terms of challenging it. So go and test the market and find out, and could you part supply with someone else just to test that out? So there's some opportunities there, clearly, because everybody's fighting for you as a customer. Don't forget that. The most challenging sometimes is actually uh, getting customers to understand what their problems are and what the best resolutions are. Because quite often they believe that, that they have got um, a requirement which they don't have and they come and look for that requirement which is unachievable. So a lot of the time we have to actually reprioritize where they think their problems lie. I think the main thing with regard to um, bankability of a company is to have analyzed the perceived risks, the returns and the cash flow to the buyer, looking at it from the buyer's perspective and therefore uh, being able to put a, a package together which scratches them where they itch if you like. Um, so if you're selling to a complementary company, you could say to that company, look, I've got a wonderful 
client base here that your products or services could sell to. And if we join together, one and one makes three. So put, looking at it from the buyer's perspective is probably the key thing. Innovation obviously is uh, one of the main edicts that we have in the computer industry at the moment um, because it's always moving on so fast that uh, things are changing. Um, so part of my job as I see it is to actually introduce this innovation to some of my customers. They either haven't heard of it or sometimes they'll come to me and tell me things I haven't heard about and leave me to try and examine it and work out how it's best going to work. Uh, for example, recently I had a customer who runs a multi-million pound business from his house and he's actually quite hard of hearing and we had to put together a program for him whereby all his incoming phones uh, were diverted to a system that would actually translate them for him and put them into emails so that he could actually read them back in plain English. Now he can see exactly what people are saying to him without having to struggle on the phone lines. So again, it's putting two or three technologies together and helping him to actually uh, push his business forward. You have to develop your skill of inquiry, the ability to challenge and probe other people's thinking, because that's the only way the board can finally come to a conclusion, is when they've got all the evidence out. So if you're not willing to challenge other people's thinking and probe that thinking, you're really not going to be making a successful contribution. Repeat business to profitability is important because you only have one selling cost, and to, to secure a new customer in the first place, may cost many thousands. Um, so to keep the customers cheaper than to find a new one. Um, again, you know, there are uh, formulas you can look at in terms of client retention, um, but a buyer would certainly look at client retention as a key performance indicator when they assess the risk profile of that business. We talked earlier about the two pillars that hold up any commercial edifice, customers and staff. Concentrating on the latter of the two, company directors would be wise to remember the words of that often cited business maxim, staff represent your largest cost, but your most valuable asset. So, how should those at the head of companies aim to get the best out of their most prized possessions? It'd be very easy at this difficult time to reduce the budget on talent development, but to my way of thinking that would be entirely inappropriate. If you stop it now, you're going to be ill-prepared for the future. This is a time when you need to deepen the talent pool, not to shrink it. And you may be losing people from your organisation, but for those that are privileged to stay in the organisation, I think you have to invest in them. This is absolutely essential. Obviously, the key asset in any company is the people, and it's glib, and everybody says it. In reality, it's, also, it's very true. It's also fair to say that most business owners um, believe the key person is actually more not as key as they actually are. What I say is actually don't refer to them as key people, refer to them as key positions. If that key person were to leave tomorrow, would the company fail? Invariably the answer is no. It's the position that's important more so than the person. But needless to say, when um, buying or selling a company, it's important that the staff are all on side and it's presented in a way which um, far from making them nervous, it makes them excited about staying. If you've got money in the, search, in the executive search budget and you're clearly not going to be hiring many new recruits, transfer that money into the development budget. But make sure, particularly amongst the leadership pool, that you have the talent available to take you through this crisis and beyond.